Well, uh, we're excited to be here at uh, Big 12 Media Day. Uh, I think the uh, year two, uh, last year uh, being in Dallas and this year being in Vegas, been really impressed with how the Big 12 does it. And um, it's first class all the way. And uh, myself and our BYU personnel and our players uh, have enjoyed the uh, the hospitality and the wonderful things that Big 12 thinks of everything. Just been really impressed with the Big 12 uh, leadership, um, specifically Commissioner Brett Yormark has done an amazing job. I, I'm looking forward to, to his leadership and following. I um, uh, love the, the addition in the Big 12 and the conference, the, in our conference teams. And I'm looking forward to, uh, I've had meetings and already got to know a lot of the ADs and, and the um, the head coaches from the from the conference and been really impressed with all of them. Great coaches, great programs. Looking forward to being on the field and, and enjoying our partnership in the conference together. Um, in terms of our players, I'm excited to get to know about our team. Uh, I'm gonna uh, we'll have time for Q and A, and I, I, hopefully I can explain the wonderful things that we've been able to do from year two, learning from year one. It's been a great learning experience for us, uh, but uh, we've done some some really cool things. That I think is going to be beneficial for our program and our team, and I think it will show this fall. Uh, just want to appreciate all our uh, people involved with BYU, um, what we stand for, our culture on our program, but more specifically our players. Uh, we brought five of them with us, have uh, uh, two players on defense, our defensive end, Tyler Batty, our defensive back, uh, Jacob Robinson, and then we have three players from offense, uh, receivers, wide receivers, Chase Roberts and Darius Lassiter, and, and then uh, offensive lineman Connor Pay. Uh, so hopefully you guys get to know them and and, and uh, get to see the the, the uh, excitement in their in their faces and, and the anticipation for this season. We're looking forward to it. Uh, we're we're anxious, but uh, it, the season can't get here fast enough. So I'll be happy to answer any questions that you guys have at this time. Again, raise your hand. We'll get you a handheld microphone. First question will come on the left side, about two thirds of the way back. Hey, Kalani, Dana Green with ABC4. Seems like every year there's a strong quarterback battle. Uh, this year, no different with Jake Retzlaff and Gary Bohannon. Uh, is this something where you think you're going to go all the way down to the, the game week right before, before deciding uh, your guy? And what, what are you looking for in this battle between these two uh, different but also similar quarterbacks? Yeah, and we, we've been through quarterback battles before and competition. That's at every position. Uh, we knew that, that we need to get better at a lot of different positions and, and we need to play the best. And so I can't tell you that there's a deadline other than when we know, we will know. And when, when, when the player takes it, and we have a, a good amount of players that can play. I mean, we have four quarterbacks that have played college football. You mentioned Gary Bohannon and Jake Retzloff, but it, you, you, there's also uh, Trace Borgay and, uh, and McKay Hillstead. They're, they're, they're on our team. All four of them have played college football and started games, and uh, that gives me a lot of confidence knowing that a lot of things can happen in college football. We, I mean, last year we, we had an injury to our quarterback position, and, and uh, you know, we, we had to learn from that. So we've, we have a much deeper uh, position with the quarterback, but we've done that with other positions as well. All right, we'll go to the right side, second row in the middle. Coach Lane Herring to a Stay Alive in Power 5. How are you doing today? Doing great, thanks. Uh, all right. I want to start off, how excited were you when finding out that Utah is going to be joining the Big 12 and to, you know, have the Holy War rivalry part, not just mean more as a rivalry, you know, but have it as a conference game? Yeah, I mean, before before I was a head coach I was, and before I was a, a former player for the legend Lavelle Edwards, I, I was a BYU fan. And it just made sense that that game was always on the schedule. Uh, I, I remember when BYU was playing Utah and the WAC, and then the Mountain West, and then we went through some the, some uh, uh, realignment in the conferences, and uh, BYU could try to continue to, to do, play that game when we're in the independent era. And now that we're in the Big 12, it makes sense that they're in the same conference and, at the, and, and also on our schedule. So we're looking forward to that game, looking forward to getting up in Salt Lake City and playing that. We have other games in, in the, in, in, before that one, but uh, we're excited that one's on the schedule. All right, we'll stay over here on the right side. Second row again in the middle. Kenneth Barry, Touchdowns and Tangents. Good morning, Coach. In regards to just, because the Polynesian culture is very rich at BYU and just in the state of Utah in general, so how do you kind of ingratiate people who aren't from that 
because obviously, you know, the different players that are and come in, they already have their own heritage. They already, everybody has their own language, their own understanding. But how do you kind of ingratiate that into educating people about the Polynesian culture, the different kinds of Polynesian people, and, you know, just uh, growing the team together? Yeah, I think the main key is I, I had a mentor uh, that I wish was still on this earth named Lavelle Edwards that went to the islands and recruited a bunch of players from my neighborhood. And, and um, as the Polynesians started to get more involved in, in, in football and, and getting to the NFL, I think people started to know more about our heritage and our background. But it's just the, the, the point of, of what we're at, it's all about family. It doesn't really matter your 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 background is I think people are, are ingrained are, are naturally uh, about loving families and about uh, and, and about good things and wholesome things and we just happen to be at BYU as a faith-based institution that we represent the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and so one of the lessons that we learn from following the Savior is that you love one another and so we do it with our love um, and, and I say those things but we, we're, we're, we're playing a violent game but there's some crazy and awesome lessons to learn of following the Savior and following following God and His plan for you, and and that's us interacting with each other. And you can do it in the game of football. It works in a lot of different ways. So it just happens that there's a lot of people that are uh, that are have faith in Christ that are in, in the islands as well, and it's just throughout the world. But there's a lot of people that follow just loving each other and being being good to each other. It doesn't really matter the religion. But I do appreciate being at this institution at Brigham Young University where we can express our, our religion. We have players that are different different, uh, different religions on our team and they can live their religion freely and be able to express themselves. And I think uh, this is, a, I, I'm just honored to be a part of the university that allows that to happen. All right, we'll go over to the left side, second row on the, on the aisle. Richie Obey, Playmakers KU. So year one in the Big 12 is a bit up and down, but the last two games against OU and OSU, we saw how competitive BYU can be in the Big 12. What can we expect to see this year, and how are you going to assert the BYU football in the Big 12? Yeah, great question. I, I would be a little nervous if we were just completely overwhelmed from last year. Uh, and, I, and I know everyone looks at the record, um, but there's, there's a we, – we had flashes of, of where we could compete. And we do know about this conference, that it's a physical conference. And, and I just got done talking about our Savior and love and everything. But we do lean on the side of physical, being physical. We like being physical. We want to be, we want to be in the sport for, the, for that reason. I, I lean naturally that way anyway. So um, we, we want to get there. We want to do all those things. The, ki the issue for us would be, can we do it consistently? And, and we've, been, we've been able to get there and, and have moments where we can compete. How can we do it consistently? That's my job as a head coach. A lot of variables go into that. And I had to, I had to decide which ones matter the most. And then how can we develop it and make it b even better this next year? I can tell you the learning process from year one to year two naturally already happens. Our guys now know what to expect. Last year was a lot of uncharted territory. There's a lot of new things that we weren't sure how you guys are going to respond to certain things. Being in a, in a difficult um, uh, environment, playing on, on, uh, you know, on the road, things like that. I can tell you through all that, the one thing we can definitely count on, our fan base is amazing. They travel well. They do a great job. They've been power conference since I've been a, bit, a, ch a, a, a kid. You know, so this, uh, we can lean on that to be a huge benefit for us, but on the field, we need to be more consistent, and that's that's what we're going to try to uh, uh, that's what we try to gain and and, and um, make sure it happens starting week one. Okay, we'll stay on the left side, fifth row back on the far left side. Yeah, Kalani Barry Trammell with the Tulsa World. You said year one was a learning process for you guys. What exactly did you learn? Man, I yeah. How much time do we have? Learned a lot, but uh, but the one thing I. It, there's just sometimes the experience itself is the, is the key going from year one you can I, I compare it to being a father for the first time I remember when my wife was pregnant we were trying to prepare for it and before we had kids we had all these opinions on how you should raise your children things like that rolled your eyes when people brought their children to movie theaters stuff like that and then when we had our own child it was like man we didn't know anything we just had to go through that experience and so it's hard to get everyone ready for that you just have to go through it and so it was a learning experience not just for for our players and our team, but also for our fans. But the one thing that stood out was our fans definitely belong. And, and, and we belong on the field too. We just need to do it more consistently. So there's a lot of different variables that I've 
been working on as a head coach. Uh, probably don't have a lot of time to explain it right now in one answer, but we are on it. And if you look at the things that we've done, we, we're not just hoping that what we did last year was enough. We've made some moves. We've done some things differently. And uh, I think I'm excited to see what happens when we get to the season. Okay, we'll stay right in that area, about a third of the way back in the center. Hi, I'm Jocelyn with the Daily Universe. Um, so earlier today, Rich Clark talked about the college football playoff, and I was just wanting to know your thoughts and about BYU's future with the 12-team format. Yeah, I mean, I, I love it. I, I think the, um, the, 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 the vision of the playoffs have never been more transparent for, especially for us at BYU. So the map and the road to the, to the playoffs, it's pretty simple, and it's never been this simple for us. It's win the conference and you're in. And so that, that's, a, that's, a, that's something that we've never had, and, and I think college football needed it. You don't, you, everyone gets to prove it on the field. Um, everybody has a shot to make it, and, and uh, th there's a lot to play for. And so you're, you're going to look at competitive football, especially in the Big 12 in November. It's going to be a lot of fun. And for us, I mean, we've been in this era where it's – you're hoping that things work out and you, things, you, you're depending on other people to make wins and stuff like that so you can get a chance to play in a New Year's Six. Now, now it's pretty evident on, on how you can get there. And I appreciate, uh, I, I appreciate, I appreciate it happening and then us being in this conference that gives us a, a path to it. All right, we'll go on the left side here. First row right on the aisle. Harper, KSL Sports. Uh, Kalani, what do you want the on-field identity to be of your program in the Big 12? Well, I think we need to be more consistent because we've had, they're, they're, like I said, we've, we've had flashes of some really cool things happen. Uh, I, I think we, I mentioned being physical. That's This conference is a physical conference. You have to be physical. That's part of, that's got to be part of our identity. So, uh, but I don't want to keep talking about it. I just want to get there and play. On a, on a, there's a lot of unknowns and that went into this year. From your guys' perspective, I happen to know and have a better perspective at all, of it all. I just can't wait to show it when it gets to the season. Hey, do we have any further questions for Coach? All right, seeing none, that'll do it. Coach, thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys.